Anyway, usually I'm background music. <laughs> and that's what I prefer. That's what I prefer. And I kind of control the party. When a party starts, you know, there's usually just like two people there. They haven't had their cocktails yet. And so I always kick off my set list with uh, the standard taking a chance on love. Okay, it's really upbeat, it's in a major key. Okay, so I get going. Now, if it still feels awkward, I just start playing louder. Guests have to talk louder, and they feel more confident. Okay, so I actually get the party started. I kick it off. You're welcome, party. Okay? So, after I kick things into high gear, I can kind of go on autopilot. Okay? Four hours, which is the average amount of time I have to play, is a long time to fill. Same most jazz standards are like three minutes long, if you just do verse, chorus, and like take a little solo. Most of them are three minutes long if you do that. If I have four hours to fill, that's 80 songs. Mama doesn't want to play eight songs. I want to play 20. I want to play 20 songs. Maybe 25. So, there are a couple of ways that I do this, and essentially, in a nutshell, what I do is, you know how, like, in school, when you're writing a research paper, and it's not long enough, and then you select everything and you double space it, and it's much longer? I double space my music. Okay. So the way I do this, is I create the longest introduction known to man. I just start with the bass line. This could go on for two minutes. Depends how loud the party is. I just keep it going. And then I start teasing with a few chords. <laughs> I'm musically flirting with the, with the party at this point, right? Then I start to hint at the melody. I don't give it away. I hint at the melody. <laughs> Is the anticipation killing you? Is it absolutely killing you? So after like a solid few minutes of laying the groundwork, I swoop in with the melody. So at that moment, everyone's ears go to that song, and even if they don't know the title, they know the song and they feel good about themselves. <laughs> the welcome party. Well, actually, the guy with the bow tie will know the song, but I'm not looking at him. <laughs> so I play through the verse, the chorus, and take a little solo, I keep going, and then towards the end of the song, I will add about three fake endings. Maybe I'll take that up an octave. But I don't end the song. <laughs> I mean, the song ended, but I keep it going. Kind of like a little musical afterglow, if you will. I keep it going based on the party, and then I end. At that point, I get another lifesaver, take some water, and it's great. So if I've done my job right, and the party is really boisterous, and I'm barely discernible over the hum of revelry happening. Hum of revelry, someone write that down. Um, anyway, if it's really loud, I can do one of my favorite things, which is to play fake jazz. Fake, fake jazz. Now, it's not going to sound the same because you guys are, like, listening to me right now. So just imagine this over just the loud cacophony of a party, okay? I have no idea what I'm playing. Thank you. Thank you. I love me some things.
like jazz. I've had the pleasure of playing that with drums and bass. It will blow your minds. Um, anyway, so as the, as the party winds down, I get fixated on leaving, okay? So if I'm hired to play from 7 to 11, you know, I have a soul. I host parties. I'm not going to just stop at 11 and be like, well, that's the time. Where's my check? I'm not going to just stop, okay? But 11.05, 11.10, if 11.15 rolls around, I will kill your party. <laughs> just like I gave it life, I will kill it. <laughs> and here's how I do it. <laughs> One simple blues chord, maybe a tinkle. Good timing with the pop of the champagne chord. And then I wait a really long time, and then I play another blues chord. <laughs> Inevitably, within about 30 seconds, the host will come over with my check, and I will be on my way. I have killed the party. <laughs> <laughs>